You guys, another week, another week that I don't have a theme song. So I'm just like trying to just make like I'm listening to some music, but I'm not. It's just all in my head. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is Monday. How are you? I am. I'm great. I'm really good. I'm actually really, really good. How are you? How was your weekend? Like, I really do hope that you will tell me somebody, tell me you did something, something, anything that you did. Um, I'll tell you that, sorry, but this is going to be one of those weeks where you're like, why do I watch this girl again? Because I did zip, zero, nothing this weekend. I, um... What did I do? <laughs> Nothing really, like just honestly. Um, I worked, I did a lot of work actually is, is what I did. Hey everybody, hi, how are you? Hi Maningi, hi Pretty, hi Lasego, how are you all? Thank you so much for joining, it's so great to have you. And yeah, I'm just telling you, I did nothing, nothing exciting, I worked. Um, Cause I've got some things that I'm working on that I'm gonna be telling you guys about soon, things that I'm working on. Um, and so there's just a lot of stuff that needed to be done um, for, for all this stuff that I'm working on. So that's what I spent my weekend doing is at home. Like I literally, I think I left my house one time, which was yesterday. And the only reason I had to leave my house is because my husband wanted to eat something specific, but he didn't want to drive. He wanted me to drive. Like, yeah. Speaking of husbands, like for anybody, anybody who's on here has, a, I really want to know, how does my husband get through life without me? Like, like just now, the reason I actually was prepared, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, you know, be on at the top of the hour. Then he says, do you know where my car keys are? No, fool. I don't know where your car keys are. Where'd you put them? Um, <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so nothing. Let's say what you said you got a question. Yeah, hit me. What do you want? What do you want to know? What do you want to know this morning on a beautiful Monday? I hope you're having a great day. Judging by your name, I'm going to guess that you're maybe in South Africa, I want to say. Hi, Marilla. Oh my gosh, Flora, I know. I owe you a WhatsApp message. I know, I know. I will do it right after this live. Um, and I promise there is a... There is a, a, <laughs> a reason why I'm on here this morning. There is. Um, let's let's go. You know what? Send me a DM just because my video editor, because he takes this video and he has to edit it to put it on YouTube and Instagram Live or something like that, and he has to keep it a certain length. And I ramble, and so he tells me off all the time because I'm rambling. But there is a point to why I'm on here this morning. I promise, there is a point. Um, so I have, for the last few weeks, actually maybe a couple of months, been having some angst, some, ang some anxieties, just feeling stressed out. And my stress really stemmed from, I'll kind of give you the background to it, is as you know, we're creating new things. I'm really stepping into new places, new things that I've never done before. And it also means that by virtue of that, I am now speaking to audiences that perhaps aren't part of my community as yet, um, not people who had been following before. And inevitably, those conversations would go something like I'd introduce, I have, you know, we have this platform, we have this podcast. What is the name? I'd be asked. And I'd say the name. The name is Ndini. And it would be, like, sorry, what? And I'd say, Ndini. And they'd say, how'd you spell that? And then I'd spell it, N-D-I-N-I. -I. And then they'd be like, and how'd you say that? And then I'd say, Ndini. And it seems for people, some people who speak a language other than my own, the two consonants together at the beginning of a, wor of a word are hard for them to say. And so it got me when, when that had happened enough times, I started to question myself and I, I started to think, gosh, if people are having such a hard time saying the name of the platform, it's going to be hard for them to remember. It's going to be hard for them to follow all of these things. 
as we're trying to grow the platform and grow our reach and share the message that I'm trying to share. And so I started thinking about changing the name. So I went down the path of, okay, I'm going to change the name. And then of course, I mean, just getting to the point where I'd named this platform Dini was, was challenging. Like it took me a really long time to reach that name. I wanted something that was not just a name. I wanted it to be something that represented the brand, represented what we're trying to do, had real brand identity in that it actually had a meaning to it versus it just being a word. Um, and so Ndini is what I landed on and it's because of the power of that. The fact that Ndini means I am and it really spoke to what it is that I'm trying to do, which is helping you realize your power and the power you have to decide your own destiny. And so that's the name that I'd reached. And But then, as I said, I was reaching new people, new audiences, and they were asking me how to spell the name and having a hard time saying the name. And I just noticed that my cousin Rumbi is on, who has, Rumbi, I don't know how you explain your surname to people because her surname is Bunzawabaya, which, yeah, go try spelling that. <laughs> and so Ndini was hard for some people to say. So I started to think about, okay, let me change the name and make it something palatable and easy to say for most people. And I went quite far down the path about what are the names and thinking about the names and how hard it was to name. And um, I see that a few of my team members have joined. So I actually went to my team and said, hey, I'm thinking about changing the name. Now, they're very polite. They have their opinions, but they're generally very polite. And this was the one time where when I said I was thinking about changing the name and I floated some ideas of what names I could change it to, they strongly, strongly objected, strongly objected. And they gave me great reasons for why it was not a good idea to change the name. I mean, ultimately, of course, they said, you know, it's your decision, but we really feel like the name, the current name has an identity, has a meaning, has a reason for the brand. And uh, so I was like, okay, great, I'll listen to them. Then I went to my sister-in-law, Lisa, who I ask stuff all the time. I was like, Lisa, what do you think? And she was like, you know, after lots of back and forth, lots of, I would text her in the middle of the night, Lisa, I don't know what to do. Lisa, what do you think? And she ended up just getting annoyed with me. She's like, look, Sandra, just make a decision, okay? <laughs> um, and then, Something happened a couple of weeks ago where, um, you know, earlier I was saying to Lesego that DM me, I actually really do reply to DMs. And somebody had DM'd me after the latest episode and then was just sending a note saying, thank you for the episode. They found it super useful and giving their feedback. And so I responded. And then we ended up kind of engaging in a back and forth. And I thought, oh, wow, here's somebody who I didn't know her. Um, I thought, let me ask her what she thinks about my decision to change the name of the platform. And I told her, I'm thinking about changing the name of the platform, and this is a name that I'm considering. And again, this is somebody I don't know, but she was very forceful in her disagreement with me changing the name. And the reason that I obviously was giving her was the fact that people found it hard to say and, you know, people wouldn't remember it. And she said to me something that is what my team had been saying to me all along, is that if people resonate with the content that we put out, if people resonate with the message, if people resonate with the work that we're doing, it doesn't matter what the name is, they will learn to say the name. And the fact that there is power in the name because it actually has a meaning, because there's so many names nowadays that are just invented, that are just created. And that that was part of the power of the brand in that it meant something and that people could actually anchor themselves in what the brand name meant. Um, and so, yeah, that was the feedback that I got from my team, from this person that I didn't know who just happens to watch and be a follower of the platform. And then another of my team members sent me a reminder this week, two things actually. 
one person sent me a reminder of something that the actress Uza Doba said. And she said that, you know, when she went to Hollywood and was thinking about, you know, what would she, what would her name be? And, you know, people were having a hard time saying her name that her mother said to her, if people can learn to say Tchaikovsky, they can learn to say your name. And I thought, wow, that's so incredibly powerful. And then another, a different team member actually sent me a quote from this week's episode. So we did an interview. I did an interview and it's one that we shared before, but I really wanted to share it again because when we shared it, we're a much smaller platform and lots of people didn't get exposed to this. But there's a woman named Ziki Biela who is a winemaker. She's the first black woman in South Africa to own a winery. And when I was talking to her, she talked about how she named one particular wine after her grandmother. And when she named it, people, you know, some of the, the, um, the marketers came to her and said, ah, I don't know that you should name that wine that because people will have a hard time saying the name and remembering the name. And she said to them that if the wine is good, they will remember the name. And I thought, gosh, that is so powerful. That is so incredibly powerful. And as if, you know how the universe gives you all these signs. Um, I was actually, I met recently a lady called Nkechi, Nkechi Noafo Robinson. And um, her and I were in conversation and she was recently competing in a speaking contest. And her speech, which we should probably really link to because it's incredibly powerful, her speech is about how when she was a little girl growing up in Canada, she went to school for the first time and the teacher asked her, what is your name? And she said, my name is Nkechi. And the teacher said to her, is there a different name that we can use that's easier to say? And her response as a little girl was, no, my name is Nkechi. And I thought, okay, if there was a sign that I needed that this platform is named exactly what it's supposed to be named, it was that. The people who will resonate with the name, will resonate with the work, will resonate with what we're trying to do, will find us. And people will learn to say Ndini, which is N-D-I-N-I. -I. They will learn to say that because if they can say Andy, they can say Ndini. So, that's kind of what I've been angsting about over these last few weeks. And I thought I'd just share that, that sometimes it's easy for us to want to make ourselves more palatable to other people. It's easy for us to want to subvert who we are and to lose ourselves and, and the power of who we are by virtue of we want to make other people comfortable. We want to make us vanilla we want to make ourselves as i said palatable to a wider mass but maybe if people can't say the name i'm not for them and this platform is not for them and i truly believe based on you who are here and the amazing people who've supported this platform so far and i know there'll be more people who'll join us and will support the work that we're doing that the name will resonate and they will find a way to learn how to say Ndini. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for joining. Flora, I will do it right now, right after this. Um, thank you so much to everybody who joined. I'm so happy to see so many of you joining. I think what we probably need to do is do a proper announcement about what when I go live so that um, um, so that people know that I'm live. And thank you. Um, you're asking what is it's a beautiful name. What does it mean? So um, as I said at the beginning of, of this um, When I started talking Ndini means I am so I am from Zimbabwe and my mother tongue is Shona So in our language Ndini is I am and I named it Ndini because I really felt the power of us declaring who we are the fact that when you say I am and whatever you say after that really decides your destiny. You know, if you say, I am strong, I am powerful, I am successful, that's what will happen for you. And if you say disempowering words after 
I am, then that's your reality too. So it's really about us taking back our power, declaring for ourselves who we say we are, not what other people or the world says we are, but who do you say you are? And the power of that, that you get to decide your own destiny. Um, the Bible says, you know, be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. And so when you say I am, and whether you think it or whether you say it, those that has incredible power and so just um you know that's why i called it ndini because i wanted this platform to reflect the incredible power that is black women the incredible power that is women of color the incredible power that is african women um so thank you thank you so much for the feedback i'm so glad maningi thank you so much yay i'm glad that you like the name and i hope that the meaning resonates let's say dm me i promise i will respond to your question and um i love you flora you are here every week supporting you dm me you send me messages and i promise i'm gonna send you a whatsapp so i just want to say have a great week um make it a great week don't forget that we're now in the home stretch. We're in the last three months of this year, 2019. We're in the last three months of this decade. And so make it good. Make it really great. If you haven't already, check out the episode that I did last week where I was giving you nine tips to make the last 90 days of 2019 your best of this year. And uh, also check out the interview that we posted for this week with the amazing Nsiki Biela, who is the first black woman in South Africa to own a winery. So thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. And I will see you same time, same place next week. Make it a great one. <laughs>